Welcome. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Hey, you know, it wasn't really that long ago. If you wanted uh, fresh herbs, maybe some organic produce, some cheese, farm cheese, that's exactly, you'd have to live on a farm to get that stuff. These days, these farmer's markets now come into town. It's the greatest thing. Usually on the weekends, uh, throughout everywhere in the country now, these markets come right into town. You can get organic produce. You can get great homemade cheeses, milk, great produce, meats, chickens. Love that. So we're going to kind of highlight a little bit of the farmer's market today on the show. That's what we're going to do, a few dishes of that. Kicking it up with the farmer's market. Speaking about kicking it up, Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Lab. Cooking from the farmer's market right here on Emerald Live. That's exactly what we did. Welcome to the show. How you doing? Nice to have you. All right, so we went to the farmer's market, fresh herbs. We got three types of cheeses today that we're gonna work with. They're kind of a triple cream cheese. Beautiful raspberries and blueberries, peaches. We got some blackberries, we got some cherries. And um, brought it all back and that's what we're gonna do. We've got some local sausage. We found the green onion sausage today. We're gonna do, yes, yes, green onion. And uh, we're gonna cook that and make a little cherry mustard dipping sauce for that in a little bit. And then I'm gonna do a summertime risotto with a lot of the summertime vegetables with some baked trout fillets that we're gonna use a little bit of fresh herbs, if that's okay with you. <laughs> One of the great things that you can find these days, too, at these markets, they have a lot of fresh grains, so you can either do uh, different cereals or granolas, etc. We're going to take cornmeal and make some cornmeal cakes with poached pears later on for a little... Oh, yes. This is Emerald Live. All right. One of the great things about the summertime in the farmer's market, they always have these little stands, and one of them that they do, at least where we live, they have these things called snowballs. Or you could call them snow cones. Oh, see now, okay. So, we're gonna make a few syrups, first of all, what we found. First one we're gonna make, we're gonna take some raspberries that we found, and we're gonna sweeten them with some sugar to actually make a syrup, a raspberry syrup, and a little bit of water, some lemon juice, so we'll have a lemon raspberry syrup and a little lemon zest. Now, you bring that in a saucepan up to, you can do these in advance too, which is the great thing. We're gonna bring this up to temperature and then we're gonna let it simmer. And then it's gonna thicken by evaporation and then it's gonna concentrate and it's gonna get thicker and we're gonna have a nice raspberry lemon syrup. Now. Oh, stop playing with my emotions, please. <laughs> then, I got these blackberries that we found today. I thought... <laughs> well, guess who's coming to dinner? <laughs> so we're going to cover them with also with some sugar to make a little syrup, a little water. But when this comes up to temperature here, what we're going to do with this one is we're actually gonna flavor the blackberry one with some mint. So as soon as it comes up to temperature, I got a couple of heaping cups of uh, mint leaves. We're gonna add the mint leaves in there, and now we're gonna have two syrups for our snowballs or cones. 
snowball snow cones. Okay. So, come up to temperature. We're going to let them cool because then they got to fuse a little bit. They got to get happy. The flavors are got to go. Then we're going to puree the raspberry one and strain it. You with me so far? Yeah. All right, when we come back, another notch! Stock it! <laughs> Everybody, cooking from the farmer's market, but we got to have a little snack along the way. Snowball, snow cone. <laughs> All right, the raspberry lemon one, we strain that through a strainer. When the sugar completely dissolves and it starts simmering, that's when you want to fuse it with the mint. Add that mint flavor in there. Then when it comes up again, you're going to turn it off, let it cool. That's where I am now. Then when it cools, we're ready to puree it. See how thick that that's got? Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> now, what we're going to do, puree this, and then we're ready to make a couple of snowballs. Now, you may want to strain this, too. Raspberries got finer seeds. Blackberries a little bigger, a little coarser. So you may want to strain it. Simply what you do is just get a fine strainer as opposed to a colander and you start straining it. Get some of those seeds. Now, we'll help it along here. We'll just get, see that nice syrup like that? Now, obviously, most people at home don't have an ice machine shaver. So, we're going to do our ice. Oh, you do? <laughs> well, we should be at your house. <laughs> All right, so we got our mint blackberry syrup working here. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do is instead of this shaver, we're just going to take ice cubes in a food processor, get it pretty fine. Check it out. That'll work. One more shot. Now, time for snowballs. Snow cones. <laughs> Fun to do with the kids. Raspberry? <laughs> oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> there you have it. A little snowball or snow cone, wherever you are. <laughs> I'm already syrupy enough, so I might as well just do a couple more. Raspberry? <laughs> I love these things. Yeah, See, and the great things about this is that, you. folks, you can keep these syrups, and uh, you don't have to worry about just keep them in the ice box, and they'll last at least a good week or two. Wow. Raspberry, ladies? That's great. You like snow cones, Doc? Love them, man. <laughs> you ever have one with the syrup like this? I don't think so. 
Looks good. I know you want one, Doc. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know that goes without saying. There you go, ladies. There you have it, a little homemade farmer's market snow cone. <laughs> Must have been me. But as soon as I got to the farmer's market, I saw the sign, sausages. <laughs> so, as soon as I saw the sign, first thing in my mind was, pork fat rules. So I couldn't resist, I bought three Hanks of them. Now, what we're gonna do, something very simple. Right now these cherries are hitting the old farmer's markets, right? They had some white cherries, pretty tasty. But the red cherries right now in the market, they're all really, really nice and meaty. So, you know, I was coming back and I said to myself, self, just like that. What am I gonna do with these sausages? So I said, well, we might as well grill them. Oh yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I got the grill on, I'm just gonna stop putting them right on the grill. And I said, well, how, what can I serve these back at the studio with? So, here's what we're gonna do. I saw some homemade jam. It was like a cherry jam. That's all I had to hear, homemade cherry jam. I'm sold. So we'll put that inside the sauce pot. Then, of course, I got these white cherries. Took the pits out of them, of course. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> Maybe it's a surprise. <laughs> I'm working for your local dentist. <laughs> but interesting enough, what I'm gonna add in here is some Dijon mustard. So what we have is the sweetness of the jam, and then we'll have a little bit of the spiciness of this mustard. You with me so far? Okay. So, the sausage is going. Now what I'm going to do is bring this jam up and also I said it would be really, really great to serve them with some of these cheeses that they had available because I'm like the sausage cheese kind of guy, you know? So I'm going to make some croutons right now, brush them with olive oil, toast them up a little bit. When we come back, I'm going to show you what they look like. Stick around! Dr. <laughs> for a dollar. How can you lose? Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. We got Master Cliff on the keyboards, ladies and gentlemen. A good buddy Lewis on them horns, huh? <laughs> Sir Charles on bass. <laughs> and Mr. Teddy on drums. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And if you just fell off the moon, Doc Gibbs is in the house. Right. A couple of things I want to share with you on this farmer's market journey. The cheeses. When you're getting ready to serve cheese, a couple things. Take it out of the ice box. You need to bring it up to uh, room temperature for at least 30 minutes, okay? At least 30 minutes before you're gonna serve it. And don't even think about serving citrus with it. You can't serve citrus. I mean, you can, but it doesn't make sense. You know, oranges, grapefruits, 
should be serving apples, pears, grapes, okay? The acidity from the citrus with the cheese, it's kind of not a good thing. Kind of turns the old churn, if you will, you know? <laughs> now, if you want to do that, hey. The other thing, I'm stacking the sausages now. What a lot of people do, they jack up the grill full blast, and then they go out there and they're going to go try to grill, especially something as vulnerable as sausages. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Easy. It's like medium heat. Use your knob. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, I meant this thing. <laughs> See, medium is a good thing. Try using it every now and then. <laughs> now, uh-oh, we could be knobless. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be knobless. <laughs> I can always rely on you guys <laughs> helping me out yeah. on the journey. All right, look, I'm going to take some croutons off right now, which, by the way, goes fantastic with cheeses. Nice little croutons like that. And then what we'll do is we'll just sort of serve a little plate here. Let's see how this is looking. Oh, this is looking good. Ooh. Ooh. Love when it's soft like that. And all, oh, gooey, ooey. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, that'll work, too. Oh, yes. Couple little croutons here. Oh, yeah. Now, here's what I do. See how thick this cherry dipping sauce with the mustard gut? Oh, this is good. You can put this basically on a bumper and it would taste good. <laughs> now, I'm going to take some of that cherry, oh, like a little compote. We're just going to put some of the cherries there. Oh, yeah, man. And then, let's see if our sausage... Green onion sausage from the farmer's market. <laughs> See the little green onion right there? There you have it, a little quick snack like that from the farmer's market, right? Oh, yeah. See, I was stacking the uh, sausage links like that, you can stack them up. Sometimes on a good day, I get them about this high. <laughs> My portion, of course. You know, about that high. Stack, oh, good. All right. We were able to find at the farmer's market some beautiful fillets of trout. And of course, right now, tis the season, lots of, lots of herbs, fresh herbs. We, uh, we've got some rosemary, We've got oregano, we found mint, different types. Uh, we've got thyme, tarragon. So I thought what we'd do is make a herb sort of baked trout. But then uh, this thing caught my eye called sweet corn. I love farmer's sweet corn. So what we're gonna do is this. I'm gonna show you a little trick. We're gonna take the sweet corn off the cob. You see, I laid my towel down there so it wouldn't go all over the floor. And then what we're going to do, folks, is this. I'm going to take the cobs of the sweet corn and put them in a pot, cover them with water, and I'm going to make this corn stock, okay? Because you've got to have stock to make risotto. <laughs> when we come back, I'll show you that risotto. Stick around, Doc Gibbs.
Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Emerald Lagasse here. If you're just joining us, shame on you. Well, we're cooking from the farmer's market tonight, and we've uh, now got the green onion sausage and three triple creams out there. And uh, we started making a little corn stock, because you got to have stock to make risotto. Now, what you want to do, a few thyme leaves, stems in there, salt and pepper, because I don't know where you get your corn. Where I get mine, it don't come seasoned. <laughs> so you got to taste the stock. Make sure it tastes. You got to season it. A little salt, a little pepper. Now, we're ready to start the risotto. Arborio rice. Very special rice. Listen, there ain't no secrets about the perfect risotto. 21, 22 minutes. It's all about the stirring. Okay? Add a little more stock. It's all about the stirring. It's that stirring of love. Just get right in that stirring mode for about 21 minutes. Your brain is on stir. Just stirring along like that. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with, in a little sauce pot, some butter. Now, we're going to get a little flavor for the risotto first. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a little onion, yeah. bell pepper. Yeah. You got to have garlic. Yeah. And we're going to add a little olive oil. Now, you got to season that. It's a layering thing. You got to season it. So we're going to season it with some salt in there. How's the sausage? Wonderful. Then we're going to fresh ground pepper. Now we got the heat going. All right. Now, that cooks for about three, four minutes. We get some flavor going. Now what we need to do is we got to add our sweet corn in here. Get all that flavor that we shucked. You like my towel trick, huh? <laughs> Portuguese ingenuity. <laughs> all right, now, we got the sweet corn in there. It's all about the stir, and I haven't even added the rice yet. All right, now, while we're getting the flavor going out of that, Oh, yeah, we're cooking with gas now. Now, while we're getting a little flavor out of that, before we add the rice and then the stock and then that stirring thing, let me tell you about the herbs. In this bowl here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some fresh parsley, some chives, and I have a little bit of mixture of oregano with a little thyme. For me, 40 cloves of garlic, hey, you know, look... Keeps your eyebrows growing. <laughs> now, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And what I'm going to do is add a nice good pinch of essence. Ah, maybe two. Bam. That's right. Ready? Bam. There you have it, all right? So now we've got that. And then I'm going to add the juice of a half a lemon just to perk it up a little bit. All right. Now, watch this. Some good extra virgin olive oil. Okay, we are ready to go with the herb. Now, look, see, I got the snap crackle thing going on right now. It's ready to get happy. Here's what we're going to do. This is a sea trout. Nice, beautiful fillets that we found down there. Sea trout. So what we're going to do is, well, I'll show you what we're going to do. Before we put this in the oven, you see, we're going to take, season it with essence. Then, ah, a little more. <laughs> Perky fish, nothing like it. <laughs> then we just dip it right inside of this. You see? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. We're just going to dip it. Let it get happy, just like that. Dip it. Happy. <laughs> happy, happy. 
Now, I don't want to waste this stuff. So what's left? Some for you, some for you, some for you, some for me. More for me. Okay, so we're going to let that just be there for a couple of minutes, getting happy. Maybe we could put a few lemon slices like this for a little acidity. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank the oven on broil. I'm going to cook it really, really hot, okay? And it's going to cook fast. Before I do that, I got to get the risotto. I got 20 minutes of work over here. So here's what we do. Now we add the risotto, the arborio rice. Let it coat it. Stir it up. Turn the cornstalk off. Now what we're going to do, we got to add the liquid. The first bit of liquid that we add, we actually cover the rice with it. Now we got to start stirring. All right. So, sweet corn summertime risotto, a little herb marinated sea trout. When we come back, another notch! Back in! Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lugasi here, cooking from the farmer's market. Sweet corn risotto. Oh, we're probably about halfway there. But look, you got to adjust the heat, OK? Got to keep stirring. See, what's happening here, this is why you got to stir risotto. See, the starch is coming out of the rice right now. Free me! <laughs> That's what's happening. I mean, you don't know that because you don't have smell-o-vision at home. <laughs> we know that here. So look, see, the, a lot of the liquid is evaporating now, but the rice is still not cooked. It's still hot. So that's why you got to add a little bit more, a little bit more stock, whether you're using water, chicken broth, whatever you're using. Matter of fact, during the commercial break, I decided to take the risotto to another level. Or you might have heard the expression, kick it up a notch. <laughs> so, how I'm going to do that. Doc, have you ever made risotto? Once. Can you, you got a second? Yeah. Can you give me a hand over here? No or, you, or, or do we have to, like, unplug you and all no, that stuff? No, not at all, man. I'm... You're not going to get electrocuted? No, I think you everything... could. You could help me out over here if you don't mind. Yeah, pleasure. If you could stir this for me while I get a couple of other things going, Doc. Oh, yeah, great. <laughs> It's not going to bite you or anything. Right, I know. Here. You can steer that. Add a little bit more stock, if you don't mind. Great, great. Okay. Okay? Got gotcha. you. All right. All, All right. right. While Doc is stirring the risotto over here, what we're going to do now is we're going to take our fish, and we're going to put this right in the pan. It's an ovenware pan so that it can hold that temperature. See all that? That's good yummies right there. That's yum-yums. Oh, yeah, you shake that in the pan. That's all good yum-yums right there. Wow. How you making out? Looks good, man. See, what we're going to do, we're going to kick it up a notch with the risotto. Here's what we're going to do. When we get close, I've got some beautiful shrimp, okay? I got a little tomato, basil, and green onions, but I'm going to show you my little secret. Well, Doc's secret, too. <laughs> Look, a little, little secret oh, yeah. how to finish that. Keep steering away there, okay, buddy. Gotcha. It's all in the steering action. Okay. All in the steering action. All in okay. the wrist. Huh? All in the wrist. Yeah. Now, I got this on broil, okay? Put it on the top shelf. 
It's going to be really, really high heat. The guy's going to be all right without you? Yeah, I think so. Okay. You, guys, you guys got it, right? We got yeah, it. we got okay. it. All right. <laughs> all right. Now, look. Got to add a little more water. Got to add a little more stock, Doc. Okay. Add a little more stock to it. Okay. About a ladle or two full. Gotcha. Now, while Doc's kind of doing the risotto thing, you feel good, huh? And I'm digging it. Yeah, it's just you're doing good. Yeah. You're doing good. Can I get one of those towels, too? Yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> Like a coming out party, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna while Doc's finishing the risotto, we're gonna uh, start this cornmeal cake. Basically, two types. Do we have time to do that, Rhoda? Okay. So we got the wet stuff and we got the dry stuff. Hey, you see? Look. Three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Rhoda's on the She's cake. throwing all those codes like that all the time. You know. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. She's <laughs> keeping us in check. You know. Keep stirring. Keep oh, stirring. Okay, yeah, right, right. <laughs> Wow. Keep staring, okay. buddy. Okay. All right, so I'm going to sift the dry ingredients, which is the flour. It's hot over here. We could. I know. Man. See, they think we're like flopping turkeys yeah. or something. You know what I mean? Real, really cooking. It's really cooking over here. That's right. A couple of guys cooking, you know right. what? You know. <laughs> All right, so I got the cornmeal, the flour, pinch of salt, baking powder, which is going to make it poofy. Yeah, it gets all poofed up. <laughs> Like my hair feels like today. <laughs> One of those poofy hair days, right, you know? Right, right. Okay, now, here, inside of the mixer, we're going to add the eggs first. How's it coming? Good. You're doing great. Oh, You're doing super. I may take you on the road with me. Oh, man, I'd love to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, I'm teaching you. You're teaching me. Great. I can crack a few uh, conga drums later for you. Sounds good. Then you can help me again with the risotto. Great, great. Now, see, Doc, what's happening here? What people got to do, see the starch is busting out like that? Yeah. Now, what they got to do now, because it's coming to the home stretch. Here, rub you. See what? Need more salt? Need salt. More salt, right? See? That's why it's like, it's called seasoning. Yeah, it is. See a little salt like that? You can practice. Look, bam, bam, like that. Wow, nice. Get a little pepper. You're doing great. You're doing great. Man. A little more pepper. Mm. It's coming. We're in the home stretch, Doc. We're That's in the home good. stretch. Okay, now oh, we got man. the eggs in there. We're going to add the sugar, milk. The thing I like about this cake, it's an olive oil kind of cake. Olive oil. Oh, yeah. Two, three, four tablespoons a day is good for you. For me, quarter of a cup. <laughs> you got a little left over, you put it in your hair. All right, look. Got all that in there. I've got a little lemon zest now. Oh, you're doing great, Doc. Some honey. We're going to put some honey in there as well. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. This is a cornmeal cake. Now, we're going to stop this, turn it off. See, I like these people. Why do I want to get flour all over them? <laughs> we're going to bring over here all the dry ingredients, put it right in. I took a cake pan, lightly buttered it, okay? When Doc and I come back, another notch! <laughs> Stuff. Three pounds, so that's one fifty and seventy five, two twenty five. Doc Gibbs in the MLI band. <laughs> Woo. Well, if you're just joining us, we're cooking from the farmer's market. Thanks to Doc giving me a hand here. The risotto is getting very close. See the starchiness? I had to switch pots. I didn't realize you were going to put the whole kitchen sink and all that in there. So, yeah, yeah. So, look, I'm going to make it happier. See, the starch is really breaking out. Now, while you were getting one of those frozen things or whatever you were doing, we took some beautiful peaches that we had from the farmer's market. They're really just sweet and just, ah. Uh. And I did one of those, of course, you know, self. 
What I did is I took sugar, honey, lemon juice, you can see right there, and a couple of nice sprigs of rosemary. Love rosemary. Now, we put it all inside the pot. Sugar, lemon juice, honey, rosemary. We made a syrup, a rosemary syrup, okay? Once that gets all happy like that, then what we do is we put the peaches inside of the rosemary syrup. See, and then rosemary makes them all happy. <laughs> Ladies, just trying to stay G, please. All right, so now while the peaches are getting happy in here, oh, okay, I'm going to show you my trick. This is it. This is the big, big money shot right here. When the risotto is just about, how do you know? Taste it. What, are you going to use your family as guinea pigs? Mmm. <laughs> the starch is ready. Here's how we're going to finish it. Watch this. We're going to take the shrimps, season them with some essence. All right? We're going to add the shrimps in here now. Okay? They're not going to take long to cook. Matter of fact, they're a quarter cooked already. See that? They got this built-in thermometer, stirring away, stirring and stirring, stirring and stirring away. Now, this is, shh, don't tell anybody now, they'll all be doing this. Right at the end when you're gonna finish your risotto, shh, take a little bit of whipping cream, right? Oh, it's gonna make it nice and velvety. Shh, don't tell them. Then, get that, see? Right at the end, we're going to add the tomato. Beautiful fresh basil at the market today. Oh, yes. Green onions, you probably call them scallions. Stirring away, look. Shh. Oh, stirring away. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Now, we're almost there. Are you with me? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shh, we're gonna go get our trout, our sea trout, broiling away in here. Woo! Oh, wait till you see this. Check it out. Look at that. See? We're really cooking here, right? Yes. Right? <laughs> okay. Now, for me, shh, another trick. See the shrimp are done. Right at the end, just before you're going to ring the dinner bell, <laughs> you take fresh Parmesan Reggiano cheese right at the end. Don't tell anybody this. Shh. Look. Right at the end. Stirring. Stirring. Turn the heat off. Turn the heat off now. 22 minutes. <laughs> now, here's what I like to do. You take this risotto, okay? Right on the old bottom like this, you take the risotto. That shrimp risotto, see? Clean it up a little. You take that delicious sea trout with the herbs, okay? Right up on top of that, like that. A little bit of Parmesan just for a little garnish. Bam! Just like that. Little chives. There you have it, okay? Now, after that cake bakes for about 40 minutes, you let it sit, you got this moist cornmeal cake. You with me? Yeah. Now, here's what you do to finish it. <laughs> Take those rosemary peaches inside of that syrup. Put it right over side the cake like that. See, a little more of that syrup like that and it gets it all moist. A little more of that rosemary syrup like that. Oh, okay. Then we just kind of bam, 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 bam. Just a little bam like that. Yeah. And a little yeah. rosemary like this. And there you have that. Yeah. You're all with me, right? Yeah. Hey, folks, I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm Emeril Lagasse. See you tomorrow, everybody. <laughs>